Hi folks, it's Teresa, Stringfield Ridge Farm. You all know, if you've watched my channel uh, very much, that I make jewel weed soap and jewel weed salve for the itches. And it's good for poison ivy, poison oak, all of that stuff. Uh, even good for like bug bites and things like that. Uh, you know, I showed one time, I told a story about uh, going out and picking the garden and I had some uh, squash and stuff, you know, uh, squash and um, okra and all that stuff that has little hairs and and the vines have uh, prickly hairs. Uh, all of that stuff just tears me up. And I had went out and picked some squash and had it in my arm and uh, a friend pulled up and I was talking to her for a little bit, like a good 30 or 40 minutes. And I had that squash in my hand the whole time. And when we got done talking and she left, I came in the house and I had whelps, just terrible whelps on my arm from holding that squash because those little pricklies that are in the, the stem and, and things like that just tear me up. So I came in the house, I was whelped up. I immediately Marco Lee and, and showed him and was like, oh my gosh, you know, just kind of freaking out for a minute. <laughs> so I thought, and I went in there and started washing with my jewelweed soap washed it good with my jewelweed soap and then I put some of my jewelweed salve on it and it just immediately started fading away and within five minutes it was completely gone and you couldn't even tell it had been there so it's good stuff I've also sold it to people uh, who claim uh, and, and they are repeat customers who claim it is really good for ex eczema uh, bad skin and stuff like that, uh, skin problems, um, particularly eczema. Um, I have probably three, I believe, three customers who um, buy it continuously for eczema. So it's really good stuff and uh, I, I recommend using the soap and then putting the salve over it, uh, but just the soap helps a whole lot. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So here's my jewelweed oil that I made. Uh, it says 2023. It would have probably been the fall of 2023. So uh, probably about a year ago, but I had already strained it. I let it sit in the oil for um, a, a good while. I don't get in no hurry about it, but it will go rancid. So. You don't want to wait too long and now uh, especially uh, straining it this is probably fine because I've already strained it but I wouldn't want to leave the uh, plant in there for a whole year because by then it probably would uh, kind of go rancid and not uh, uh, have more chance of, of, of uh, spoiling anyway um, so I would probably leave it in there for a month or two and then strain it and then it still smells fine and then use it within a year at least um, probably I'd say use it as soon as you can but like I said this is probably close to a year old here so it's still fine um, and I will be using it's got a little residue in the bottom I'll probably shake that up um, so I've already made soap a couple of times out of this and I've also made some salve out of this. So it was probably, this is probably about half. It was probably up to there. So this is about half of what I actually had uh, to begin with. I'm gonna show you what all I have here that I use. And most of this stuff, because I use lye, I make lye soap. And uh, so most of this stuff is, uh, uh, you don't want any metals and uh, and I keep this stuff separate so that I just use it for making soap because, especially because of the lye. So I use a glass bowl and that is to mix the lye and water in. Um, I use the same measuring cup. Now this is plastic measuring cup, so it probably, I don't know how long it'll last. You can see it's kind of got a glaze in there. 
and that is from the lye kind of eating in there uh, at the so I keep this one separate. I have uh, my own uh, other, I have my other measuring cups that I use. This one's just for soap making. So um, I also have a couple of utensils that I use that I keep with this stuff. And this is just a cheap dollar store, dollar tree actually, spoon that I use. And, uh, and I have a, a, this is not a wooden chopstick. Uh, although you probably could use a wooden chopstick. This is a um, plastic, plastic chopstick. Uh, don't even remember where I got this at, but uh, I use that to kind of get the soap down in the corners of the mold. You'll see that uh, a little later in this video. And uh, let's say you need a good uh, thermometer. And I use this one, it's a digital. I use that to, uh, to uh, take the temperature of my oils and my um, lye mixture to uh, get it about the same temperature before you mix them. So uh, you don't want them too hot. <clears throat> and um, I, I, I wrote down, I have a little um, recipe. I wrote it down so that I can go back and use this every time. And uh, I wrote on here to get the temperature about 125 or close therein of each, but sometimes I just go ahead and mix it at 140. Um, the, it gets really hot. The lye water gets really, really hot, and uh, so it's hard to get that temperature way down to 125. It takes a while. So about 140, sometimes I go ahead and mix. So I uh, also need a scale. You need a scale to measure your lye and your um, oils and your lye and your water. Um, and then, um, so I've got lard back here. I use lard. You can use other things. You can use coconut oil or, um, you know, different things, but I like lard and lye uh, soap. So that's what I use. So the only other thing, oh, gloves, of course. Um, I don't use the gloves until I get ready to use the um, lye. And once I'm using the lye, I put the gloves on for the rest of the time, uh, just in case. And it, it won't, um, you know, the lye is dangerous, uh, uh, not really dangerous. I'm not gonna say dangerous. It's, um, you just have to be careful with it. Uh, when I first started making this soap, I was a little scared of it. And uh, I'd heard people talk about it like it would burn their skin off. And it might if you leave it on there long, but um, I saw a video where um, it was uh, living on a dime and she was making lye soap and she showed just, just to show that it's not as dangerous as some people act like, she rubbed some on her skin of the uh, mixture after she had mixed it all up and rubbed some on her skin just to show that it's not that dangerous. And uh, then she washed it off and rinsed it with um, vinegar. I will keep some vinegar over here while I'm doing this. I didn't get the vinegar out yet, but I will keep vinegar over here once I use the lye, uh, start using the lye. Uh, I keep vinegar because if you do spill it on your skin or splash it on you um, or something, it, it uh, the vinegar will um, neutralize it. So you can use some vinegar and then wash it good um, in your clothes. If you get it on your clothes and you don't get it off good right away quickly, um, you might end up with a hole in your clothes later on. And that has happened. Um, towels, I use some old towels. This is an old stained up towel that I'm going to use today because I'm ready to get rid of this dish towel. So you can put essential oils in here when you get ready to mix the whole thing together. I'll show that a little later. I always use tea tree oil in all of my stuff. My soaps, my salves, all have tea tree oil in them because tea tree is wonderful. It is one of the best things, one of the best oils you can use. Um, anyway, so we're gonna move on. That's a little later in the process there. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, <clears throat> start mixing my lard and my oil over here in my pan to heat that up. 
to get that melted and, 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 and hot and uh, buy my recipe. And uh, you know, there's a certain ratio for these things. So you have to look up a recipe or know the ratio. I looked up a recipe because <laughs> I didn't want to calculate ratios. So I looked up a recipe and it makes 10 uh, bars of soap um, in my um, molds. These are my molds. I have pink ones and purple ones. Color doesn't matter at all, of course. But uh, this one's not cleaned out good from the last time. <clears throat> but that's okay, too. Uh, normally, I clean them out good. This one I didn't clean out good. But um, this is kind of mold I use. You can use the loaf molds. I really like the silicone. Um, and you can get the, I have a loaf one, but I don't like the loaf one as well because then you have to cut them. And uh, I know I never cut them um, evenly. And uh, so anyway, I just like this kind. I can just pour them in there and pop them out. So uh, that's the kind I use. And this recipe makes 10 bars. <clears throat> so like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is start measuring my oils. Uh, I will measure them by weight. And um, so it calls for four ounces of my oil and um, 16 ounces of lard or, I put or fat is what I wrote on here, uh, but oil. Um, so it calls for two pounds. And so I split that up in 16 ounces of lard and four ounces of oil. Uh, like I said, this was a recipe I found online, and I wrote it down so I could use it every time. And uh, you could double that. If you wanted to, you could double that, but they don't recommend making a whole lot at a time. Um, I, I can't remember the reason, honestly, but they don't recommend making a whole huge batch at a time. Definitely could double this, but I prefer to just make the little batches at a time and then I know I can get it done and over with pretty quick and, and move on to something else. The last couple of days I made um, soap. Um, I made soap, I can't remember what day, like Monday and then I made soap again on Wednesday and this is Saturday I'm making soap again. So I'm gonna have 30 bars when I'm done but I didn't want to do it in big batches and be overwhelmed. So I just like the small batches. And then I put all my stuff up together in one tote and get it back out, you know, all together, one tote. So, all right. So I'm going to get started and um, put this uh, maybe down here where you can see what I'm doing. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned my hand, um, my hand blender. You really need a hand blender. You don't have to. You can blend it yourself with a whisk if you are got a good strong arm to do that with, and I don't, so I have the hand blender. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna get started with my four ounces of soap. So I'm gonna put my cup on here first and then turn it on so it is zeroed out. And when I pour this in, I will know exactly what I'm getting. So I'm gonna pour in four ounces. right there so move that aside out of my way put that in my pan and then I'm gonna zero this back out and uh, <clears throat> so with the lard I'm just going to scoop it in here. Probably the more perfect way to do it would be to melt your lard and then put it in here, but I'm not going to do that. I've done it this way many times, and I'm not going to do that. All right, so then I take and scoop my lard in here. There's six ounces, 10 more to go. And I'm gonna get this melted down some and then start on my lye mixture. 
Okay, I'm putting on my gloves now because I'm fixing to start this lye mixture. This is starting to melt good over here. So I'm going to put on the gloves and start the lye mixture. Now, I'm going to wet this cloth just a little in case I spill a few little uh, pebbles of this. I can wipe them up quickly. With a wet rag, they'll, they'll come up quickly. So... Okay, I'm just trying to be real careful with this and not spill it much at all, uh, or well, not spill it, let's say. So I've got a little measuring spoon here that I'm gonna dip it out a little bit at a time until I get to that 4.4 ounces. Now, you're not gonna breathe this in until you mix it in the water. And you do mix your lye into your water, not the other way around, because you can you'll cause a reaction that has lots more fume. Um, you mix your lye into your water, 4.4 ounces of lye into 10 ounces of water. Now, I will put this recipe in the description below. And I also have an older video of this. If you want to go back and watch my older video, I don't think I explained things as well. Um, it was a couple of years ago and I was more insecure about doing this my own self. So you can go watch that video if you want. It's the same recipe. Now when you mix your lye into your water, you will get a little fume and you don't want to breathe that in. So I turn on my exhaust fans. I actually have two exhaust fans. I have one above my stove and one over here in the kitchen that takes our heat through the house. So I turn both of those on. Oops, I'm almost there. There we go. There we go. All right, now. I will turn on my exhaust fans when I mix the lye into the water. You could open a window or a door, but just make sure you don't breathe in that fume that comes off of this. So I've got this done. I'm gonna throw my spoon over in my sink in case it's got any uh, little bits of lye on it. And get that closed back up and out of the way. And then I take my wet rag and just in case I spilt any little pieces, I run it around here and on my measuring, uh, on my scale to make sure if I spilled one little crystal, I can kind of get that up on this rag. There we go. Now, all right, now I'm gonna lay that rag over out of the way. I'll shake it off in the sink in a minute. So there's my 4.4 ounces of lye. And now I'm gonna get my 10 ounces of water. So I'm gonna zero this out. And then I'm gonna take and get a little water. So I need 10 ounces of water. So I'm gonna pour this into this bowl until I get 10 ounces. Getting close. Right there. 10 ounces. Now, we'll get rid of that jar. Okay, now, I'm going to take and um, put this in the sink because I don't want it splashing at all on anything. So, I'm going to set this bowl in the sink and pour this lye into it and mix it with the back of this spoon. I'm not using the front of the spoon because I use that with the, I could clean it off and use it, but I may need to stir that again. Oh, it is getting right over here. I need to turn it down. So this is all melted and I'm gonna turn it down so it doesn't get too hot. <clears throat> and um, you know what? I'm just gonna wipe that off. I could grab it up there, but I'm not. Uh, so um, I'm gonna, put this in the sink and do this. I'm going to show you, if I can, I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to move my spoon out of the way, move everything out of the way over here. Turn you around, maybe. 
we'll try to get you turned around here to see the sink. Oh, let's see. Here we go. All right. All right. You can see the sink. All right. I'm putting my water bowl down in my sink. I have to turn on my exhaust. So you're going to hear a loud exhaust that's going to be right behind this camera. <laughs> so I hope you can still hear me. I'll talk loud until I get this done. So I'm gonna flip on my exhaust fans. All right, hopefully you can still hear me. I think you can. I'm just gonna slowly pour this in here and stir it. I'm gonna turn my head away so that I don't get any fumes. I could open this window, but I just don't bother. I've got two exhaust fans, so I'm just gonna pour this in here and um, do it quick. It only fumes for just a few minutes, but then it gets really, really hot, which is another reason I have it in the sink. So here we go. Not bad. Now, I'm going to take this cup, throw it all over there in that sink, and take my wet rag and wipe here everywhere where I had all that at to make sure I get up any little pieces. There we go. And now, I think those fumes are gone, but I'm going to leave that on just a minute, make sure. All right, we're going to use our digital thermometer. tell you just how hot this is. It's already cooling down. It went to 190 for a moment and now it's starting to cool back down some. So I'm going to rinse that off a little and then I'm going to check my okay, I guess I'll roll you back around here. Sorry. I'm going to check my oil. Let me get my rag, wipe this off, check my oil. Okay, my oil is at 200, so we want to turn it off. I'm going to pull it off of the stove too. So my oil is already at 200, so we're going to take it off of there, and we just have to keep measuring every few minutes until we get them both about 140 or less. So, um, with this, I had to close this back up to turn it off. So let's close that up. And uh, I would just have to wait it out and uh, wait till um, they both get the same temperature. So I'm not gonna hold you that long. I'm gonna turn this off and come back when they are the same temperature. All right, folks, they are both about 140. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. I'm going to get my hmm, mixer going here. You can see my little hand mixer. I've got my spoon. Got everything here. And I cleaned this out good and dried it so that I can use it to dip and pour into here. I don't want to pour from this pan. It's too bulky and difficult at the very end I do. But I get me a, my measuring cup has the little spout so that works good to pour. And I got me a little vinegar over here in case. Got my oils I'm gonna mix in here when I start mixing. Here's my lye water in here. So I'm just gonna take and pour that lye water in there. Put that back in the sink, run a little water going in it. I won't because you might not be able to hear me. And then I'm going to start mixing this some. I'm going to, I've got it mixed a little. I'm going to go ahead and add my oils. And I'm just do uh, about 10 drops of each one. And then I'm going to mix it some more until it gets to what they call trace, which is just where it's thick. 
Um, so I want to just fix that up good. That's about right. You don't want to get it too thick either because it won't um, uh, pour well into your mold. So I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to be careful with this. Get that over there and get that over there in the sink. And I dropped a towel. <clears throat> That's one of my good towels. So now I'm just going to take my measuring cup and I'm going to dip and pour into these molds. Oh, and then I'm going to take this, um, it broke on the end. It's broke. I was looking for the shorter end, the thinner end, but it's broke. Okay, but I'm going to take this uh, <laughs> chopstick and kind of run it around in there so it gets all the way to the corners. That's what I'm doing there. So here we go. Just pouring, and I'm taking this chopstick and kind of running around to the corners so it gets all the way down in the corners good and then i can kind of use it to get all of that out of there really good i'm take that and kind of smooth that out i didn't get that kind of get that in the corners like them others there we go, that looks good. All right, there we go. That's it, now everything's in the sink. I need to wash up good. I will leave my gloves on while I start washing this because you don't want that to get on you. And um, it usually ends up on me somewhere. <laughs> so, but that's okay, because I wash it off. I can use my vinegar to uh, splash on me and, and neutralize that a little bit, so. Anyway, time for cleanup. Now, uh, one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off to um, clean this up in a little bit. I'll put the gloves back on and clean up in a minute, but I wanna show you my uh, finished products and um, I'll show you what I've done the last couple of days, the ones I've done. I'm gonna wash my hands a little bit. Make sure I don't have any I did have the gloves on, but just in case, I'm going to wash my hands a little and get over here. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to have to turn this off to take you over there, I think. Okay. Here's the ones I've done the last few days. Um, this, this past week, I worked on 10 at a time. There's 20 here. And so I did not smooth the tops out real good. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Uh, they, I think without smoothing the tops down, it looks more uh, homemade <laughs> and maybe old fashioned. And so the bottoms are smooth, but uh, the tops I just left and didn't smooth them like I did this batch that we just done. Uh, so these, uh, you need to pop them out of the mold after 24 hours and set them out on something. This is just wax paper. Um, and I'll set them out here. Uh, I probably will move them to a box and put them in a better spot because they have to set up for 30 days. And uh, after 30 days, you can begin using them. So after 30 days, I will package mine up and, um, and and start selling them. I will have some at the Heartland Homesteaders Picnic for sale. And uh, I do have, we do have an Etsy store. Uh, it is Stringfield Ridge. I will leave a link in the description below along with the recipe uh, for soap making for this recipe. Oh, here's one. I just package them up in a plastic bag. This is an older one. You don't package these up until 30 days. This is an older one. I've only got a few left of. I did smooth that one out. That one's smooth, but I just package them in a small Ziploc bag with a homemade label on there. Um, thanks for watching. Give us thumb up, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe.